Okay, so I hear that, and I'm thinking of Rudy the other day, and among some other arguments that may be a little more whatever, he made one argument about, I think it was in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, that, yeah. Right, that Pittsburgh and Philadelphia had different standards for curing ballots than That's maybe exactly other counties right. in the state had. Can you, can you yeah, explain yeah. that for us? Yeah, they're raising a Bush v. Gore problem because what they're saying happened is this. Under state law in Pennsylvania, there's no cure process. In other words, uh, when a voter sends in their absentee ballot, election officials are supposed to review it and make sure that it complies with state law. So there's supposed to be a signature. There's supposed to be the voter's name and address that they have filled into the form. If any of that information is missing, or if the voter, for example, forgot to sign the ballot, under state law, the ballot is rejected, a end of story. But what happened in, in uh, Pennsylvania was that election officials apparently in the two big urban centers, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, decided to set up a cure process where they would call voters and say, look, we're going to reject your ballot unless you come in and fix it. And the, wow. the problem is folks in the rest of the state, they didn't have that opportunity because the other counties followed the law and didn't set up a cure process. You know, people may think it's a good idea from a policy standpoint to set up a cure process. Sure, and if sure. the state legislature wanted to do that, they could. But you can't have two different standards in the same election because what that meant was that folks in uh, uh, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia had a greater opportunity to vote than people mm. in the rest of the state. And so the Trump wow. campaign, the Trump campaign is claiming those absentee ballots that were cured should not be counted because it violates the principles laid out in the Bush v. Gore decision. Well, that seems rock solid. That's like as close to a one-to-one -one as I could imagine. But the question is, to, so what would the court rule? Like, would the court, and are we able to say, oh, well, that's only a thousand ballots, or could uh, the court take a different stance, which is we're throwing away all the absentee ballots in those counties, or is that too extreme? Now, that's too extreme. And in fact, you've just put your thumb on the problem, okay? The, the proper remedy for that would be to say to Pittsburgh and to Philadelphia, you have to pull out of your count any absentee ballots that you gave folks the opportunity to cure, and they came in and fixed. I have no idea whether they would be able to do that. I, I, in fact, I kind do. of... Yeah, I kind of doubt it, because remember, once... Once the absentee ballot is separated from the information that tells you which voter sent yeah. it in, it dis it disappears into a huge pile with all the other ballots. So I'm not sure they can pull it out to in to reduce the count. So what's a court do with that? Well, sometimes you have situations where a court says, "Yeah, the law was violated, but there is no remedy that will fix the problem," and wow. that is the big legal hurdle that the Trump campaign faces in this case. Now, we kicked off the show with a uh, New York Times story from 1994 in Pennsylvania, and the judge threw out all the ballots, all the absentee ballots, because right. he said there was enough fraud in them. Now, there was only 1,700 ballots. It was a local state Senate race, but it did flip the result, and it flipped the state Senate. So there is precedent for throwing out all the ballots, but is it just that this is too many ballots to throw out? It's just too much of an ask for the court? Yeah, it, it may be. Um, I, I'm very familiar with that 94 case. And, you know, the difference there was that, as you said, it was a much smaller race with a much smaller margin of victory. Judges, you know, are very reluctant to mm -hmm. overturn the results of elections, even when they've got substantial evidence that the results were compromised. So wow. here, I think you have to convince the court, one, that you're right, and second, that there's actually a remedy that will fix the problem, and I don't know if they'll be able to do that. Whoa. Uh, okay, we got about two and a half minutes. Can you give me one more kind of, maybe maybe the best legal case you think Trump's team has other than that one? Well, the other one also is out of Pennsylvania. Because remember, the other claim that they're making, which actually I think is, is a strong ar legal argument, is that Remember, the deadline set by state law in Pennsylvania for the receipt of absentee ballots was the end of Election Day. So your absentee ballot had to be in the hands of election officials by the end of Election Day. Um, 
state officials there with the approval of the state Supreme Court extended the deadline for the receipt of absentee ballots to three days past election day. Now, once again, if the state legislature, if they wanted to do that, they can't because the Constitution specifically gives state legislatures, not state government, but specifically state legislatures, the power to set the rules governing federal elections in their state. And I think the, the argument that the Trump campaign is making is um, uh, the state courts and the state officials, they didn't have the authority to basically override state law and extend the deadline to three day, for three days. And every absentee ballot that was received after Election Day should not be counted. That, that seems rock solid legally as well. Do we have any idea what number that is again? Uh, no, that, that is unclear. And also, again, it's unclear whether or not they would be ab even able to find those ballots. Um, remember, the election was on Tuesday. On Friday, after the election, Justice Alito, who is responsible for the, uh, that circuit of the, and those states, issued wow. an order telling state officials to keep those late received ballots segregated but we don't know if they actually did that or whether it was already wow. too late because that was so after that's, the election. Yeah, yeah. So that's more of a, that, that'd be more than the other case we just talked about. That seems almost like a compromised enough situation where the court could maybe throw some things out. More so than the other case yes. you said, at least. Yeah, no, wow. that's true. But, but what I don't know is how many ballots were received after the deadline and is it enough to change the outcome? I think the last time I looked you know, the margin of victory 60, was a little 000, over 60,000 60, votes in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know if that many. I don't know if that many were received after Election Day.